around as far as you know physical disability and accessibility, but as far as intellectual disability, there's still the blind spot. Well, it's time to eliminate the blind spot. We do not need to be, quote, fixed. We do not need to be cured. Autism and all those other disabilities are not diseases. Nicole's autism went undiagnosed until her early 20s. She faced ridicule, isolation, and limited opportunities. I was, you know, teased very badly. I had to overcome many obstacles. I had the dream of going to college, but of course, you know, I never took college prep courses because it's the end of junior high. You know, we mentioned, thought of planning down the road for college, and we were just ended up getting focused on vocational incentive program. It ended up being easier because there were people that said, oh, I'm afraid Nicole's spirit will be harmed by setting expectations beyond her ability. There were people, teachers that said that stuff. It's like fear of like, and at times, you know, basically ended up talking me out of taking risk. I think they basically sheltered me. I say all parents out there nowadays, they need to embrace the dignity of risk. We need high expectations just like everyone else. Oh, we need to be held to the same standard. Today, that dream is a reality. As part of the SUCCEED program, Nicole attends the University of Vermont. Since 2008, this partnership between the University and the Howard Center offers a college experience to those with developmental disabilities. The experience encompasses campus life, student housing, career development, functional academics, as well as UVM courses for credit or audit. One, I need to learn to be a better public speaker because, you know, I wanted to become a Kennedy Fellow, hopefully. Grabbing people's attention, that's structure, threat, it's right. Society is the one that needs to change. The one that needs to presume competence. We support, we can work, we can have our own apartments. We need to bring the two worlds together. Living on her own, Nicole works tirelessly to bring about this inclusion as a self-advocate. The self-advocacy movement, started in the late 1960s, was designed to give a voice to those with a disability and is considered one of the last civil rights movements. Green Mountain Self-Advocates, started in 1994, includes over 600 individuals across Vermont. Nicole has been a GMSA advocate since 2007, in addition to mentoring peers and teaching workshops. Walking into the self-advocacy movement was, you know, the best thing that ever happened. It impacts all different parts of people's lives. It helps their self-esteem, being able to take more control over making decisions about their lives, it reduces social isolation. It enables people to advocate for other additional resources that they need. One of the most important pieces is that people are getting support from their peers. Who better than other people with intellectual and developmental disabilities is able to communicate what it's like being a Vermonter with a disability. Each spring, Green Mountain Self-Advocates sponsors Voices and Choices in Burlington, Vermont. This two-day conference provides information and support for those with a disability and their families. Educating people with disabilities about the real world, giving them a, a peer perspective, not sugar-coated. In her workshop, Nicole shared her personal experience with debt. See, when I was in my 20s, you know, I went to Job Corps. You know, it's not a nice environment to go to if you have a disability. I ended up going on a spending spree like crazy as a way to cope with it, just to get off campus. Money management can be challenging. It's not always easy. You save a little, you spend more. Not only are there more challenges and fewer opportunities for those with a disability, but historically, these individuals are four to 10 times more likely to suffer abuse. Nicole educates state legislators about these and other issues. A domestic and sexual violence grant, which we developed a guide on recognizing and responding to abuse, and an accessibility guide for making meetings cognitively accessible. Recognizing her uh, extensive skills at being able to research, analyze the information that's, that's out there about different legislative issues that affect people with intellectual disabilities, and then being able to just have a positive relationship with legislators. The other key role that Nicole plays is being able to take the very complicated information that happens here at the State House and translate that information to not only myself, because I really rely on her to be able to keep me updated as to what's going on, but also be able to teach her peers. 
kind of break down the information so that people understand how the decisions that are made here at the State House affect their lives on a day-to-day -day basis. This year, one of GMSA's main objectives was to get the Respectful Language Bill passed by the Vermont Legislature. People use disrespectful and derogatory language. In particular, there's the word mental retardation, uh, the R word is what we call it, uh, that's used to harass and to describe people with intellectual and disabilities. Oh, it's not as much offensive unless they're oh, saying it directly at the person. My brother will oh, say the R word at the computer, and it's like, hello, it's like, you know, it's just as offensive, you know, even if you're not directly saying it to the person's face. It makes me want to run and hide, curl up into a ball. Instead, Nicole was persistent in getting the Respectful Language Bill introduced. Having the Green Mountain self-advocates, Nicole and, and others, get to be known faces in the State House is very important. Hey, Nicole, how are you? Good. People recognize them the way they recognize lobbyists for other issues. They develop credibility that way. Yeah, so how did it go? Well, it was Yesterday. very well received in our community. And on May 11, 2011, the Respectful Language Bill was signed into law by Governor Shumlin. Nicole is able to reflect on how her presence is changing attitudes here at the legislature and with other political policymakers throughout the state. Administrations need to learn to respect us. And we all deserve equal rights just like everyone else. We don't deserve to be segregated. Attitudes are the real disability. Disability rights is my life. It's fun, it's empowering. It'll take the jaws of life to get me out of it.